Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, we are so happy that uh, so many of you could, uh, could attend and, uh, on a relatively short notice. Before uh, I say anything else, I would like to inform you all that this event will be streamed on the UPS uh, uh, website and YouTube channel, so just so you know. And uh, I am immensely uh, happy to welcome uh, Professor Olivier Roy. Um, he is, uh, as you know, um, a professor at the University, uh, European University Institute in Florence, where he um, heads the Religio West uh, Research Project uh, by the European Research Council. He's also a scientific uh, advisor of the Middle East Directions Program uh, at the EUI. He was previously at uh, the French um, National Center for Scientific Research, and he was a professor um, at Berkeley University. Um, in 2008 and 2009, he was headed the OSCE's mission for Tajikistan, and he was a consultant for UN's office um, of the coordin uh, coordinator for Afghanistan in 1988. So Olivier Roy, he, has, um, he is, of course, one of the leading voices on the issue of radicalization, but he also works a lot on religious pluralism in Europe and uh, elsewhere. Um, he has published a lot of books, um, the most recent ones, after uh, the failure of political Islam, that is of course one of the big classics of, uh, uh, about uh, Islamism in general. The mo more recent ones include Globalized Islam in 2004, Holy Ignorance in 2010, Jihad and Death, uh, in 2017, the global appeal of the Islamic the jihad and that the, the global appeal of the Islamic State, and in search of the lost Orient in 2017, and even more recently, uh, he has a new edited book <laughs> that is called uh, "Tribes and Global Jihadism." So, uh, Olivier, thank you so much for uh, for coming here. Um, here is better. Mm. And he will now speak for 45 minutes, and afterwards we will have a Q&A. Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you, team. Mm. Um, yeah, um, I will, uh, of course, uh, speak uh, about things I wrote uh, uh, already. I have uh, no uh, breaking news about terrorism for today. Uh, uh, it's more a long-term uh, uh, approach. Um, so, as you know, there is a um, huge debate on what are the roots of radicalization, and you have hundreds of uh, articles, books, speeches uh, on that. Um, so, there is a methodological problem, you know, uh, from where we start. And the problem is that very often we start from um, ideas, you know, um, uh, radicalization, um, uh, it's because of uh, uh, Salafism, it's because of uh, fundamentalism, it's because of the Western policy uh, in the Middle East, it's because this and that. You know. uh, but we have few global studies on the profiles of the uh, uh, radicals. So now books are coming. Uh, um, um, uh, you have, um, uh, of course, here you have uh, Thomas Hegamer who is working on that. Um, uh, there is a, a, a book of my colleague, uh, Farhad Kosrokavar. The book was published two weeks ago, um, so, and it's not yet translated uh, into English nor into Norwegian. Um, uh, it's a synthetic book uh, with um, a comparative approach uh, in, uh, in Europe. But in fact, you know, all the people who are working on terrorism, we know each other. Sometimes we hate each other, that's another story. But it's a small uh, 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 community, in a sense. and you have a market, of course, uh, of uh, radicalization, de-radicalization, etc., etc. Uh, so you have a lot of research, of researches, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, there are national uh, uh, um, uh, researches, you know, that people working on uh, uh, German, Germany, Great Britain, and so on and so. Uh, so we can make comparisons now. Uh, although the methods of uh, um, research are not necessarily, uh, of course, the, the same. So I did my research on uh, France and uh, Belgium, the French-speaking Belgium. Hmm? Uh, because, in fact, uh, uh, the networks are the same. Uh, uh, 
uh, Paris, Brussels, um, uh, its uh, uh, continuation. Um, um, but uh, as I said, I tried to compare uh, to co compare with uh, the uh, other countries. Um, uh, the problem is uh, on which which kind of data do we use? Yeah. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, databases. Um, uh, some of them are, I would say, uh, quite um, uh, mythical, if I can say that. In France, there is the so-called fichier S, S for security, uh, which is supposed to have 20,000 names. Uh, but um, uh, this kind of files is not based on any uh, scientific uh, uh, approach. And they know it. They don't claim that it's uh, scientific. The, the police said, just say, every time we have something, you know, uh, we create a file and a name. Uh -huh. So uh, it could be because uh, uh, there was some uh, suspicious posting on Facebook uh, or because uh, uh, the guy or the girls were involved, you know, in a meeting somewhere, or made a, a declaration in another place. So, um, uh, it's not uh, there is no uh, uh, rigorous thing in that. Personally, I decided to take, you know, uh, the list of um, all the uh, people in France and uh, Brussels who have been directly involved uh, in a terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, either the attack was successful, unfortunately, uh, the Bataclan in Paris, or was a failure, no, uh, the uh, uh, Christmas market in Strasbourg in 2000. No. Uh, because if we take only uh, the successful attacks, uh, uh, then there are not so many attacks. Mm. Uh, but the problem is, what is a failed attack? Uh, sometimes they just dream to do something, yeah? they don't do anything. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, I pick the, the, the name of the people who were involved in a, a project which was close you know, to uh, 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 be um, uh, achieved, perpetrated. And to that, I added a certain uh, uh, names of uh, uh, jihadi, of people who went uh, to, um, uh, to Syria. Of course, we have hundreds and hundreds of uh, 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 French people who went to, to Syria. So I tried to pick the name of the, um, uh, the guys who played a role, for instance, in recruiting other, other uh, uh, people, or uh, who um, uh, uh, died in action uh, in uh, uh, Syria. Of course, this list is not exhaustive. Uh, uh, nobody knows exactly how many people, who are there, and so on and so on. But uh, uh, my uh, objective was to uh, work on the profile of uh, uh, the so-called radicals. Um, uh, I didn't work on the socio-economic profile. First, uh, there are other works which have been done uh, on that. And uh, it's not uh, what interested me. Uh, because uh, when we work on radicalization, uh, in fact, we have uh, hundreds or some thousands of people now. And it's a bit a problem, you know, to try to find socio-economic reasons. Because, by definition, uh, uh, they recruit mainly in the same pool of population, uh, of youth, uh, 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 first of youth, uh, uh, and uh, uh, youth living in the so-called destitute neighborhoods. Uh, but if this were the cause of radicalization, we should have dozens of thousands uh, of radicals. Right? Uh, uh, so um, the socio-economic dimension, maybe, um, yeah, there is a correlation, sure. Right? Uh, but the correlation is not so important. Right? And um, the explicative dimension of the correlation is, I would say, poor. Right? Uh, 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 if you go for jihad uh, just because we are jobless and uh, 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 a policeman uh, made a racist comment on you, well, uh, we should have uh, uh, 500,000 of uh, uh, jihadists in France. Mm. Um, the more mm, is, um, you know, the, uh, it's also a methodological issue. Um, to which extent these youth are representatives of a category of population? Mm. It's a big question. 
You can uh, do this kind of work when you find that uh, between the group of radicals and uh, a, a population, um, uh, you have links. Um, for instance, um, uh, if you studied, you know, uh, communist parties uh, in the past, uh, you don't have the communist party and the working class. You had a lot of intermediaries. You had the unions, uh, uh, you have a cultural association, sports club, etc., etc. So you can prove that the uh, the vanguard, if we can say that, uh, was the vanguard because uh, uh, behind the vanguard you had a lot of uh, uh, differential, you know, kind of uh, connection between the radicals, quote unquote, uh, and a category of population. We don't find that with the terrorists mm, or radicals. Uh, uh, none of them, uh, for instance, was um, an, uh, um, an important member of a uh, uh, mosque. Mm. Uh, 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 most of them didn't go to the mosque. Mm. Uh, some of them did go to the mosque, but they never were important. Mm. There are few exceptions here and there. Uh. So when I say uh, all, never, and so, it means 95%. Uh, 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 there is always an exception. And there are national variations. People with uh, religious background are more uh, important in Belgium and in Austria, for instance. So, uh, uh, but uh, um, in uh, Norway, uh, uh, Holland, uh, uh, and uh, Great Britain, no, it's like, an, like in France. No, the, the, the connection is loose. Mm. None of these guys uh, have been a militant of any kind of political, social, or uh, community uh, organization. No. Uh, none of these guys were uh, found you know, years ago in a pro-Palestinian, for instance, uh, uh, movement. None of them. No. No. Uh, none of them uh, was involved in uh, Islamic uh, uh, NGO. No. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them was caught by the police, you know, in a political demonstration. Mm -hmm. Any kind of political demonstration. Uh, uh, the only place where they had a communal life, a community life, is uh, when there is one, is a sports club. No. Mm -hmm. uh, or jail. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, uh, it's why, you know, um, the social background, of course, everything plays a role, you know. But um, not only, um, it's not a very strong correlation, but it doesn't explain in anything. So I, I try to look more precisely at their uh, own profile. And here I, find, I found patterns mm, on my databases, you know, uh, uh, which uh, uh, I will uh, uh, explain to you. And then the issue is to compare these patterns on my uh, space with the other places uh, in Europe, which is still a work in progress. Um, the first pattern is, uh, so I started in 1995, uh, because the first uh, um, uh, kind of this home ground terrorism was started in 1995 with Khaled Kelkal in Lyon. Uh, we have here uh, uh, um, a break. Before 1995, uh, most of the terrorist actions uh, which were done in Europe and, uh, I would say, related to the Middle East, uh, uh, but what you want, the Palestinians, the Kurds, the Armenians, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 the Iraqis, the Libya, uh, what you want. Uh, all the terrorist actions were done by uh, uh, professional militants, uh, members of a, a group or of a party, uh, who came from the Middle East to perpetrate the terrorist actions and to flee. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the guys who uh, did operate you know, in the 70s and 80s and early 90s uh, uh, succeeded in escaping. No. None of them perpetrated a suicide attack. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, usually it was a car bomb, for instance, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they had a, a, a plan, an escape plan professional escape plan with fake passport, what you want. And so we are still trying to find uh, uh, the guys who attacked the uh, synagogue uh, uh, Rue Copernic, uh, you know, in 1980. We are still trying to, to find them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and suddenly, uh, in 95, we have a new pattern. A young guy, educated in, Fra in France, uh, 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 whose language is French, uh, 
um, um, and who is uh, seen as maybe uh, a petty delinquent sometimes, but also quite well integrated, hmm? uh, goes for action, and he kills himself, or he let himself be killed by the police. There is no plan B, no escape plan. So, and it's a constant pattern. You, know. you have either a suicide attack, or if the su it's, uh, there is no suicide, the guys stay and wait for the police to come. No. That's the same pattern. Mm. And I would say almost everywhere. Uh, uh, recently, uh, uh, um, in uh, Barcelona, for instance, uh, they run with a car uh, uh, in the streets, uh, they fled, mm. but then they were caught you know, in a small town, just looking, going around uh, uh, with no way to hide, uh, 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 no way to go. Mm. And when they saw the police, mm, uh, they uh, open the, they, they make the police think that they had a, 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 a suicide bomb on, on them, you know. The police killed them, and they had no uh, 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 bombs uh, on them. No. So they taunted the police to be killed by the police. <laughs> you have no other explanation, you know. Uh, and Khaled Kalkal was the same. So they killed a uh, dozen of people. And then he went, you know, on the hills. Mm -hmm. And one month after, uh, he was caught by the gendarmerie. He, he, he showed his gun. He, he didn't really uh, uh, shot. He showed his gun, and he was uh, 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 killed by the uh, by the police. So, uh, in 20, uh, well, it's. Um, uh, 22, 23 uh, years, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have the same pattern. Uh, there is no third wave of jihad, it doesn't exist. We have the same pattern since during the last 23 years. Mm -hmm. It started in France, but then, you know. um, of course, um, the first kind of uh, uh, terrorism uh, didn't stop suddenly. We still have, until 9-11, uh, people coming from the Middle East. But after 9-11, it's finished. You know. uh, all the uh, terrorists are home ground terrorists. In the USA, as well in Germany, as well in France, as well in Italy, and so and so. Um, so what is the first pattern? Uh, uh, we have among them about 60-65% of second generation Muslims and 25% of converts. Mm -hmm. uh, and the figures is stable during the, uh, the 23 years. It's strange, because in 1995, it's normal to have the second generation. In uh, France, Germany, uh, 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 Holland, Belgium, and so on, uh, uh, the labor migration uh, took place in the 60s and early 70s. So the children of the first uh, uh, generation of migrants uh, yeah, uh, came into age in the 90s. So they are 20 years in the 90s. So we say, Normal, yeah. but 32 years, 33 years after, uh, 33 years, it's a, a time of a new generation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this second generation, they made children. Uh, and still we have no third generation uh, uh, in uh, the uh, terrorists. We have some first generation, or I would say a category of um, uh, nomad guys, Tunisians, for instance, who left Tunisia when they were 18, 20, went to Italy, married an Italian, then went to Germany or to Great Britain, and so we have this kind of guys that we could uh, 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 consider as a first generation. We have no third generation. So my Belgian colleagues say, oh, no, we have a third generation in, in Belgium. OK, so. Um, uh, 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 footnote, you know. Uh, I would like to see that uh, from closer. Uh, but uh, um, let's uh, say okay. Uh, but in France, uh, we don't have. And the group of uh, uh, the Zaventem Brussels guys, all second generation. Mm -hmm. Bizarre. Mm -hmm. Converts. Mm -hmm. Why should converts join jihad? Uh, if it's a problem of racism, a problem of Middle East politics, uh, um, and so, what are they doing there? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the, uh, as I said, both figures are stable. What we have among converts is a, a gender change. Oh. Uh, the converts were massively males uh, until 2011. And suddenly we have an increase, considerable increase, 
of uh, women, and specifically young women, uh, going to, uh, 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 and some of them were involved in uh, terrorist attacks, uh, which failed. Uh, um, uh, most of them went to Syria. Mm -hmm. So we can probably say that um, it's the attractiveness of uh, the ISIS model which uh, attracted, uh, uh, which uh, uh, drove them to, to, to jihad. Now, how ISIS model could be attractive for a young woman? Okay, uh, that's another story. But uh, the fact is, they are attracted. You know, uh, 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 they like on Facebook. Uh, uh, we have the, um, uh, so now it's more and more difficult. They, uh, they avoid to use Facebook and so on. But in 2011, 12, 13, there was no censorship, no control. The police looked, uh, but not systematically. Um, and so um, uh, young people used to circulate uh, uh, pictures or uh, videos of beheading. And with like, oh, look at this one. Oh, I have a better one than you. And so and so. Uh, and uh, the girls were between uh, 14 and, nine, and 20. Hmm. Well, OK. Hmm. Uh, uh, explanation uh, might come later if we have enough time. But I don't think we'll have enough time. So it's OK. Uh, uh, so the first pattern. Uh, um, uh, the second pattern. And um, I must say I'm the first to have said that. There is something very strange in these groups. In all the cells uh, since 19. 97 with the Begal group, we have at least a pair of brothers, systematically. Mm -hmm. One has never said that. Since that, you know, uh, in, um, uh, yeah, in uh, the extreme left, uh, uh, you may have by chance, you know, brothers, but it's not a pattern. You know. uh, in IRA or in the Italian mafia, you have brothers, yeah, but you have the fathers also. You have the whole family. Uh, uh, and the godfather for uh, Italy. Uh, uh, in the, uh, with the uh, Islamist radical, we almost never have the father. Uh, there are some exceptions. Uh, uh, Mohamed Mera was supported by uh, his mother. But um, it's obviously um, a crazy family. Mm. Uh, it's not typical at all. No. Um, uh, the, the court uh, proceedings are very interesting on that. Uh, uh, usually there is no uh, 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 father nor mother. Uh, one other case is in Italy. You know, a mother who converted to, um, to follow um, her daughter to um, Syria. Hmm. Yeah. So this um, Italian culture, you know, um, uh, she thought that the cooking was not good in Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, uh, and in France, we have one case of a mother also who converted uh, to follow uh, uh, his kids. But globally speaking, you, know, uh, 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 you have brothers everywhere uh, uh, and no uh, fathers. Uh, every cell uh, is 100%. Uh, 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 the Zaventem Bataclan uh, uh, group, 20 guys, 10 of them were brothers from different families. But half of the guys who uh, uh, attacked, you, you killed themselves, you know, were brothers. Half. Um, uh, another pattern, it's less systematic for the terrorists, but it's absolutely systematic for the jihadi. Um, I found that about 20, 25% of the, uh, the guys uh, had a ch child yeah. in the year preceding the attack. Hmm. Strange. Yeah. Uh, you know that you uh, will die in a suicide action because they go for dying. Uh, and you father uh, a child. In uh, Syria, as it is well known, it is systematic. They are ordered. To, uh, 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 so the, the organization provides them with a wife, yeah, uh, either a, saves, uh, a sex slave yeah, or a convert, or, or uh, somebody who came, uh, a woman who uh, came from, uh, from Europe, yeah, and they are so intent to make children. Yeah. And we have these patterns, so now they are coming back, or trying to come back, so we know. Yeah. Um, uh, we have uh, women who are now 25, uh, 30, and they have uh, uh, until uh, five children mm, for two or three uh, different uh, uh, husbands because the guy was killed yeah, uh, at each time. So they were given another husband. Huh? It's kind of uh, 
polyandry uh, in time, you know, if you can say that, you know, temporal polyandry. Um, uh, uh, and so they have uh, children from uh, uh, two, three different fathers, and all died. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's a strange pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, another pattern is death. Mm -hmm. They all die. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, either directly mm, or indirectly, you know, by waiting for the police. Uh, from a, a tactical point of view, from a, a military point of view, it's stupid, you know. Uh, uh, the Avantem uh, 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 Paris group uh, was a group of uh, skilled guys, you know, they were very well trained, very well organized, a good logistic system and so on, uh, very effective, and they all die except one. Mm -hmm. So now the problem of ISIS, after the Aventem, they had to rely on uh, lone wolves or uh, guys who are far less efficient, uh, uh, who attacked with a knife and things like that. You know, they lose uh, their best uh, uh, militants in suicide attacks. And you have no need to make suicide attacks. The guy in Manchester, you know, uh, he came into a theater uh, uh, with a, um, a bag full of explosives. Uh, so he could have put the bags under his seat and leave. Uh, no, 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 no. He explodes the bag while he was sitting on the seat. Strange, you know. It's why my book is Jihad and Death, you know. Uh, the fascination for death, for me, is at the core mm, of uh, uh, the decision to go for action. Of course, some of my colleagues disagree because, for instance, um, uh, David Thompson, he interviewed people who were coming back from uh, 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 Syria. And he said uh, uh, there was no uh, uh, the drive of death among them. I said, yeah, of course, they came back. You know, uh, uh, they decided not to die. Uh, so, uh, so I'm not saying that uh, you join uh, SIS only because you are fascinated by death. What I'm saying is that among the terrorists who go for action, the uh, 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 drive uh, uh, of death is central. That's all. You know. Uh, because there is, there is absolutely no tactical or strategic need uh, uh, to uh, die. It would be far more rational to survive. Um, uh, and of course, they think they will go to paradise. Um, so uh, that's the main uh, uh, pattern. If we go to other patterns, um, it's less significative. Um, for instance, very few of them uh, uh, have a religious background, very, very few, uh, especially in France. So in, the, in a sense, they are very French, they, they are secular. Yeah. Uh, uh, they are more religious in uh, Austria, uh, apparently, mm. um, so, uh, and in, in Great Britain, mm. but uh, not, not in, in France. Uh, the place of radicalization by order is jail. 50% of them has a background uh, of petty delinquency. Uh, in Norway, according to my colleague uh, whom I met uh, last, uh, last year, it was 63% who had a past of petty delinquency. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, um, I rely on one of my colleagues. If you have other data, um, uh, I welcome it. Um, uh, but generally speaking, yes, we have about half you know, of uh, people with the past of petty delinquents, which means that jail is the first place of radicalization. The second place of radicalization is, you know, uh, um, a sports club, mm -hmm. uh, and especially martial art, um, kung fu. They love kung fu. Uh, uh, and the, the third is a mosque. So uh, we have the hierarchy. Um, um, uh, so, if we combine all these factors, yeah, um, uh, we can go into more details. Um, uh, in France and uh, Spain, uh, there is an other representation of North Africans, which is normal. Mm. It fits with the patterns of uh, uh, migration. Mm. But in Germany, uh, uh, Holland, Denmark, uh, you have also a majority of Moroccans. Mm. And it doesn't fit mm. with the uh, patterns of immigration. Yeah. In Germany, so the, the most uh, numerous Muslim population is uh, from Turkey. You have almost no one Turk or Kurd mm, in, uh, uh, involved in radical actions. Almost no one. Uh, 
you have more converts, German converts, uh, uh, than Turks leaving Germany for Syria. If you will look at the converts, so uh, who are the converts? And we have also here an interesting pattern because it's a general pattern. Uh, there are two groups among the converts. One are the, uh, it's not politically correct what I'm saying, the blacks. And it's very interesting because it's not the same blacks of the dif in the different country. In France, it's mainly people from the uh, uh, Antilles, Caribs, uh, um, uh, and some from Africa. But we have an astonishing number of uh, converts from uh, Martinique and La Réunion. Uh, 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 in Germany, uh, you have a uh, uh, few black uh, uh, immigration, colonial past, and so they are Métis. Uh, the blacks are Métis. Uh, uh, in Holland, also, a lot of Métis. A lot, let's say, not so many, uh, fortunately. But uh, it's significant in terms of uh, percentage. Uh, and the second category is, you know, white middle class. Uh, with no background uh, uh, of uh, anything. You know. uh, in France, the department uh, who has the highest uh, uh, level of radical converts comparing to the local population, of course, huh? it's Horn in Normandy. Mm -hmm. Normandy, west of France, uh, uh, very little migration, traditionally Catholic uh, 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 pl uh, place. You know? uh, so we have uh, mainly people from Normandy and Brittany. Mm -hmm. Nobody from Corsica. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the Corsicans don't know if I am... Um, Joking, or uh, if I have um, <laughs> an idea about Corsica, but it's, uh, it's no Corsican, it's so French. <laughs> uh, not so strange, by the way. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, why? Why do we have this uh, middle class, white families? Uh, 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 and we have also an interesting pattern. All the books written uh, uh, um, on uh, my uh, son or daughter, uh, the jihadi, uh, they're all written by a mother of a convert, uh, uh, never the father. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a psychoanalyst, so I will not go uh, further into that, but uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, uh, so, um, now, um, it's not so, the con uh, conclusion is, it's not a mass movement. Uh, it's not something, you know, coming from the grassroots uh, with a, a process of uh, uh, slow radicalization when you have different level of radicalization with a, a vanguard going for action, but other people watching, uh, applauding, and so on and so No, no. Uh, there is a break. There is a, a jump, you know, uh, uh, from uh, 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 normal life, uh, uh, normal quote-unquote, uh, uh, into uh, radicalism. And it's a big problem for the police. Hmm. Uh, because it's very difficult to spot people you know, uh, uh, before they uh, go for action. Um, um, the, the idea, uh, the dominant idea in France, and not only in France, in Germany, everywhere, is that um, uh, the uh, terrorist radicalization is a consequence of religious radicalization. That uh, it's Salafism, uh, namely, uh, which uh, terms the people religiously radical, and then among the religiously radical people, a uh, uh, small part of them goes for uh, political radicalization, violent radicalization. Mm. Problem, uh, it doesn't work. Mm. That's all. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the Salafi mosques in France are all under control now. Yeah. Uh, uh, the police uh, started this job 20 years ago, uh, in 1995, precisely. Uh, so uh, the police has a good mapping uh, of the uh, religious uh, uh, activities in France. Uh, the police would prefer you know, this kind of explanation uh, if the Salafi are responsible of, uh, at least, if a part of the Salafi are uh, radicalizing, then it's easy. Let's uh, 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 curb uh, uh, Salafism. And it's what, you know, uh, most of our politicians, except uh, president for, for now, huh, uh, want to do. You know, close the Salafi mosque and then uh, we, we have no terrorism. It has nothing to do. No, that's a problem. You know. uh, uh, when I say that, I am attacked uh, because I'm supposed to exonerate Islam. That's not the issue. You know. uh, 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 the issue is how it works. You know. uh, of course, these guys are Islamist radicals. Of course. You know. They think they will go to paradise. So 
they believe. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about that. But how uh, uh, do uh, does the, um, uh, uh, the religious dimension play a role? How it works? You know. And it's not, if we look at their trajectories, it's not a causative way. Uh, uh, they are n none of them is first um, uh, uh, born again, and then after, you know, sometimes after uh, reading the Quran, going to mosque, uh, they came to the conclusion that uh, uh, I should become a, a martyr, you know, I should go for jihad. No. Mm. Uh, uh, for most of them, they, uh, they bec became born again and radical in the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very important uh, because the, the answer now, uh, the, uh, you know, you, you have a lot of project of uh, de-radicalization, fighting radicalization, and yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to make some money, and we are some uh, trying to do it, you know, with this kind of market, it's very easy, you know, I have the key of de-radicalization. No, no. Uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, they have no, um, uh, yeah, so the, the dominant idea is reform Islam, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, put on the market a nice moderate Islam, and if possible, a feminist and gay-friendly Islam, you know, and then there will be no terrorism. Nonsense. These guys, they go for radicalism. They don't turn radical by chance, you know, because they met the wrong imam or because they read the wrong book. You know. They are looking for radicalization. You know. uh, 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 and it's very clear in their... Uh, uh, in the way they speak, in the way they, they act. No. Uh, 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 so, um, um, uh, putting on the market, you know, um, uh, no, it's like trying to um, save um, somebody who likes um, uh, vodka by offering uh, 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 grape juice, you know. Um, it doesn't work, you know. Uh, if he wants vodka, he wants vodka. Uh, 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 if you suppress all the vodka, maybe, but... Uh, um, so... Um, uh, now that's the, uh, the last issue, if I can say that, how uh, does it work? Yeah. And um, uh, it's not a theological issue. Yeah. The, the, the guys don't debate on what is the meaning of jihad in the Quran. They want jihad. Mm -hmm. And they read the Quran to find, to find again what they want to find. Uh, so it's why they are, uh, dis you know, discussing, you know, uh, uh, um, throwing verses of the Quran to each other, uh, 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 holier than Zoro, and so on and so on. Um, uh, they use the Quran as an argument, you know, but they didn't become radical through reading the Quran. You know. uh, and here, uh, my concept of the, the narrative, you know. Uh, what fascinates them is... Uh, the Islamic narrative as uh, constructed first by Al-Qaeda and then by uh, 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 Daesh. Mm. Um, it's a, a narrative of jihad. Mm. No. First of all, it started as a narrative of jihad. Uh, the starting point was the 80s in Afghanistan, except that the jihadi of the, uh, who went to Afghanistan in the 80s were not terrorists. No. Never. No. Uh, uh, terrorism started in 1992-93 with Ben Laden. Mm. And Ben Laden uh, uh, presented himself as the, the hair, more than the hair, that the, the, uh, the guy who uh, uh, has to um, develop the legacy of jihadism in Afghanistan. So he played on the, the legitimacy of jihad, but he changed you know, uh, uh, jihad into uh, a terrorist uh, uh, thing. Why? So his thinking was strategic. Mm. Um, he was thinking that uh, it's useless to establish an Islamic state here and there uh, because uh, 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 you will be defeated so sooner or later. Uh, um, um, of course, if there is an Islamic state here and there, like the Taliban in Afghanistan, it's okay, it's good. Uh, but it's not our job. Uh, our job is global jihad. Uh, uh, it's not to have a nice Islamic state in the mountains of Afghanistan. It's global jihad. Uh, and to fight global jihad, we had to strike the enemy at the core. Uh, 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 so 9-11, that's the, uh, the model uh, for, for, for all of them. You know, that's the perfect case. Uh, it didn't work, so, but uh, uh, for them, it's just because we have to do it again or better uh, uh, and so and so. So uh, Ben Laden took uh, in his hands, I would say, uh, 
the old narrative of global revolution, uh, fighting imperialism everywhere, uh, fighting imperialism at the, at the core, you know, um, uh, uh, by um, saying, you know, like exactly the same way that there was a debate on socialism in uh, one country or uh, global revolution. It was exactly the same kind of debate. Uh, uh, the, um, the, um, there will be, um, Islam will win only globally uh, and not locally. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, uh, and it's clear that he attracted with that many guys who, uh, in fact, were looking for a global uh, uh, fight. I would say, you know, so it's, it's more a comparison than an explanation. But uh, you have a structural uh, a comparison between uh, the extreme left in the 70s not in the 60s, in the 70s, and uh, Ben Laden, or Bader Maynouf and Ben Laden. Uh, same idea, uh, uh, revolution uh, can be only global. Uh, jihad can be only global. Uh, you cannot rely on um, uh, the national uh, community, uh, the local umma, or the local working class. You cannot, uh, uh, you cannot rely on them, and you should not rely on them. If you are really global, you don't care about what is going uh, on next door. Uh, and so. uh, then you have to unify the different uh, struggles, you know, uh, and then to find techniques of terrorism, which are uh, sure to, be, uh, uh, to, to make uh, uh, the, uh, the headlines. Uh, it's Bader um, Meinhof uh, with the Palestinian who invented the simultaneous hijacking of planes. Uh, um, of course, they were less murderous, far less murderous than Al Qaeda. But the technique is here. You know, Al Qaeda has perfected, you know, uh, uh, um, the um, techniques invented uh, by uh, uh, some um, extreme leftists um, in, in the seventies. Mm -hmm and uh, using an Islamic um, uh, rhetoric. Mm. Um, in the same time, I would say uh, there is something very strange, uh, which means that the extreme left, who was uh, you know, the promoter of internationalism uh, in the 60s, 70s, mm, uh, the extreme left now is fighting globalization. Mm. The extreme left is no more internationalist. Now the extreme left is local, uh, Occupy Wall Street. It's my ground, you know, uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street, uh, uh, fight against uh, an airport in France, against a train uh, in Italy. Um, uh, it has totally localized. Mm. Uh, uh, you have no global coordination of uh, struggles. Uh, you have an imaginary, uh, you share an imaginary, of course, Occupy Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I would say, in a sense, the extreme left is... If you are a good member of the extreme left, you have, you have to use uh, complex concepts and read uh, uh, Alain Badiou or Laszlo Zizek, and it's not very attractive for many young people, you know, who would uh, want the real thing. You know. uh, so they are not, the, the extreme left is no more attracting people from uh, the um, uh, uh, lower classes, if I can say that. Uh, 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 ISIS is attracting this kind of people, yeah. Um, and um, the, the last point is that um, ISIS is using a very sophisticated narrative. And it's more than using, it's not using, it's staging. Yeah. You have videos, uh, 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 and these videos are absolutely professional. Uh, you have websites. Uh, uh, you have... Um, uh, interviews, you know, uh, they speak, they explain, and so on. Uh, and uh, among these uh, videos, you have these videos of beheadings. Mm. Um, in a sense, it's strange, because usually when a radical movement uh, um, is uh, bloody, you know, murderous, they don't expose mm, their crimes. Mm -hmm. They killed people, you know, the Khmer Rouge were not uh, taking pictures you know, or videos. No. They were not boasting of uh, killing uh, hundreds of thousands of people. They were trying to hide it. The Nazi were trying to hide you know, uh, their crimes. No, um, uh, uh, no. Uh, Daesh is um, uh, publicizing, you know. And more than that, staging. We know, for instance, that many uh, videos of uh, uh, um, uh, beheadings have been 
rehearsed. You know, there was a rehearsal first. Huh? Uh, they had to uh, to uh, learn uh, uh, how to play. Huh? Um, and um, so my um, idea is that um, yeah, and, and at that point, uh, what do these youth have in common? They have in common to share the same youth culture. Mm -hmm. If you look at all these guys, Abdeslam, uh, uh, um, all these guys, before turning terrorists, they were totally, you know, emerged, uh, living in the modern Western youth culture. Music, dress, uh, uh, fast food, uh, what you want, you know, slang. Uh, slang. Uh, 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 um, um, streetwear, all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 Daesh is taking the aesthetic of this youth culture, pushing it to a paroxysm of violence, you know. Call of Duty, for instance, it's not a joke. We know that Call of Duty played a big role, you know, um, uh, in this uh, mobilization, hmm? because Daesh explicitly used, you know, the, um, um, the visual rhetoric hmm, of uh, many uh, video games. Hmm? Uh, uh, so, the, the, his strength of Daesh, Al-Qaeda started, uh, but Daesh made all that uh, uh, in a very professional way, is to um, express, you know, this kind of uh, Islamist ideology in um, uh, the framework of the modern youth culture. And it works. That what works. No. To attract the young from the West. And now, and it will be my, my, my last point, uh, can we globalize uh, uh, the uh, scenario I'm giving? You know, uh, it's an open question. Uh, um, with there are national differences uh, um, among radicals in the West, from California to Germany. Sure, there are uh, differences, but globally speaking, I think my um, uh, uh, scheme is working. Now, what about uh, the um, uh, Russian-speaking people from Dagestan? What about the Balkans? Is this kind of uh, uh, fascination working the same way in Kosovo than in Brussels? Mm -hmm. uh, and what about Turkey? What about Tunisia? What about Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. What about uh, India, Bangladesh? Um, I'm very happy, no, uh, it's not good news, but um, intellectually satisfied that, for instance, uh, in Kerala, they found uh, an Al Qaeda cell in India, in the state of Kerala. Um, and it's all made of converts. No. Some from Hinduism, from uh, Christianity. No. no one Muslim. And you have Muslims in Kerala. No one. Um, um, uh, a good pattern, for instance, uh, because uh, as I said, for me, uh, the generational dimension is uh, uh, very important. Uh, um, uh, a good pattern to see how it works the relationship between young radicals and parents is uh, burying the dead. You know, who is burying the dead? Who is uh, 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 claiming the, the the body, the corpse? Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, uh, there is a rejection. Uh, uh, the parents are reluctant, you know, to uh, acknowledge uh, the, uh, except the converts, mm -hmm. the parents of the converts. Uh, and it's a pattern, you know, the way uh, the body of the dead is, um, how say, uh, uh, managed, if I can say that, is a good indication of uh, the socialization of the idea of jihad. Well, let's take another example in, in Palestine. Now, you may have some uh, young guys who go uh, to kill a policeman or so. Uh, parents may disagree, but parents do understand. They know why uh, uh, their kids are doing that. You know. And so it's very important for the Palestinian parents to have the bodies back. You know. It's one of the uh, bone of contentions. You know. uh, and uh, while in Europe, it's exactly the contrary. Nobody knows to do with the body. Uh, so uh, one uh, of the criteria is to look in different countries, how they manage the issue. In Tunisia, the parents refused the bodies uh, when there was an attack in the south of uh, Tunisia. In Turkey, in some cases, the parents refused to uh, bury the body. Of course, some of my colleagues say, yeah, it's because of police pressure. Uh, first, we have no indication uh, that there was police pressure on this case. And in Tunisia, police pressure, you know, uh, uh, it's not an issue, uh, uh, at least for, uh, for now. So how is it going in Saudi Arabia? 
because we know that there are many young uh, and uh, from uh, uh, middle class families and, uh, no, uh, going to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to Syria. Uh, what are the patterns, you know? We don't know, uh, because the Saudis are not uh, very eager to have social scientists and sociologists, you know, going to make field work uh, 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 there. Mm. Uh, uh, but there are some, we have some indications. One of my, of my uh, colleague, uh, Pascal Ménoré, uh, wrote his thesis uh, 20 years ago, no, uh, uh, 10 years ago, on car racing in Riyadh, you know, uh, young guys you know, uh, 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 organizing car racing on the uh, Thursday night, you know, uh, taunting the police, uh, uh, having accidents, and all that. You know. And if you can destroy your car in one night, it means that you are not a poor uh, guy, that you are from a family, uh, uh, at least middle class. Okay. And then he came back, you know, years after, to find where uh, these guys uh, are. Uh, the guys who were playing car racing when they were 18, 20, uh, so they now they are 28, 30. Where are they? No. Uh, a number of them were dead in accidents. Mm. Uh, some became Salafi mm, after, and the others went to Syria. Mm. No. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, uh, now uh, we don't know the background of the family exactly, and so on. So, uh, uh, but uh, there are a lot of um, um, uh, similarities, uh, but it's total uh, work uh, in progress. But there is a common point, uh, uh, and it's my main thesis. Uh, radicalization comes from the deculturation of religion and the reconstruction of religion outside culture. It's why we have second generation and converts. First generation, they have. Uh, the, the, uh, the religion is embedded in a culture. Third generation, same thing. You know, it works more or less, but the third generation of French Muslims, they learn from their parents how to be a, a, a Muslim in France. Uh, 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 the problem with the second generation is that not only they no learn nothing from their parents, but they have a big problem of transmission, language. And for me, it's why we have another representation of North Africans. Because it's uh, here in North Africa that the language gap is the strongest. Uh, 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 usually, uh, uh, second generation doesn't speak the language of his grandfather. Uh, with the father, it's mixed. Uh, the father understands French. Uh, uh, and the kid might understand more or less uh, the dialect. But none of them uh, 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 reads and speak Arabic. Uh, uh, so they are torn between three languages, mm. the local languages, Arabic, and French. Mm -hmm. And their real language is French. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we have the maximum deculturation. But when these guys have children, mm, uh, uh, they always spoke French and good French with their children. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, here, the children, they, uh, they, you have a transmission. It works more or less. You have tensions, but you have a transmission. Uh, for the Turks, uh, um, uh, it's clear, you know, uh, uh, third generation Turk in Germany might speak better German than Turkish, but he can speak in Turkish with his grandfather or her grandfather. Uh, he can read. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 also because the alphabet is Latin alphabet, he can read. Uh, uh, he knows you know, what is Turkish Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, he might have some problems with Turkish Islam, but you don't have the break, you know, uh, 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 which is a characteristic of uh, the second generation from North Africa. And the last attacks in uh, uh, Great Britain, you had more North African than people from uh, uh, South Asia. Mm. Normally, we sh could think that uh, in Britain, for demographic reasons, you know, uh, the majority of the uh, radicals would be South Asian, from South Asia origin. It was true um, uh, in the um, uh, uh, early 2000, plus uh, 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 blacks. Mm -hmm. uh, now, no. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the passage to the third generation uh, is a, a, a key uh, uh, of integration radicalization. Thank you very much. Mm.
Thank you so much, Olivier, for this uh, fascinating presentation. Um, you always come up with new ideas every time uh, I hear you speak, so it's uh, very interesting uh, every time to listen to you. And I also very much like your comparative approach, that you're very open to discussing the different cases. You're not saying that radicalization works the same way in all countries, all cases, that uh, you're very open to discussion with on the difference and the comparative dimension of this. So um, before we open for questions, I will. Uh, I mean, I will share the um, the question and answer session. So, if you have questions, please give me. Uh, um, try to signal something to me, and I'll write you up on a list. But just before we uh, make some questions, uh, I would like to take the privilege of chairing to uh, ask three questions. And these are uh, the first one is. Um, now we are speaking a lot about uh, ISIS uh, being on the military defensive. Uh, um, and even the Iraqi Prime Minister declared a military victory over uh, ISIS in December. So I wonder how much of a threat is ISIS uh, today and the ISIS, what is left of the ISIS model? Secondly, um, what are the challenges of the returnees? Because of course you have said that the returnees have been fewer. Uh, of course the returnees f um, from Syria and Iraq, this is what we're speaking about. The returnees have been fewer than we expected, but what are the challenges and what should be done about them? Should we put them in jail or should we do something else? And thirdly, um, after the Charlie Hebdo attacks uh, and then the November 13 attacks, Bataclan, um, um, some people said that France was more targeted by jihadi violence than other countries in Europe. So I wonder if you agree with this. And if France is more targeted, why is that? Yeah. Okay. Um, the ISIS model is still on the market. So uh, ISIS might be military uh, destroyed uh, or at least uh, uh, seriously weakened. Uh, it's more difficult for ISIS now to produce, you know, to produce videos and so. We see that the quality of the videos is not so good, or they are recycling, you know, uh, uh, interviews or uh, videos which were uh, uh, shot before, and so, etc. Et but um, the, the reason of the fascination for ISIS are still there. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, uh, who will manage uh, this? Um, I don't so, so Al-Qaeda is trying to come back as the uh, real leader of the global jihad. I'm quite skeptical. You know, uh, uh, After ISIS, it's difficult to find something which is uh, as fascinating. Uh, we have the local jihads, uh, uh, Mali, uh, Chad, uh, um, uh, Sinai, uh, Yemen, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan. I'm skeptical for reasons we uh, explain in our book on tribes and global jihad. It's because uh, these local jihad are mainly tribal, uh, based on a tribal territory, tribal organization. It doesn't mean that all tribes are jihadi, mm. but all the local emirates are tribal. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, a tribe can uh, uh, attract some foreign fighters, but cannot you know, integrate them. Mm -hmm. uh, the matrimonial market in a tribe is usually quite under control. You know? And the big mistake of ISIS was precisely to have antagonized uh, uh, local uh, 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 tribal people, and especially uh, tribal notables. So, so um, um, uh, the, the, we don't know. Uh, we don't know. What we see is that uh, the defeat of... Uh, so when ISIS was... Uh, uh, decreasing in the recent months, uh, they launched an appeal, uh, a global appeal, so go to the street, kill police people, uh, do something, and so on. We had some cases where, uh, like that, you know, like in Treb, you know, in France, uh, but, you know, uh, the guy was, I would not say alone, but uh, uh, it was a very small group, very individual things, uh, uh, very artisanal, um, uh, uh, so I think it's going out of steam. Mm. No. The reservoir is still there, but it's going out of steam. Uh, for the returnees, it's a big psychodrama. No. What, is, what is the problem? You know? uh, most of the uh, male volunteers are dead. Okay. Some did, uh, are not, uh, didn't die. If they didn't die, it means that they, well, well um, uh, uh, they decided not to die. Mm -hmm. 
which is a good starting point, you know, uh, when uh, you uh, uh, want to think about what you did, uh, the validity of your engagement, and so. Uh, these guys are known. Uh, uh, they cannot travel, you know, without being immediately spotted. Uh. So the idea of a guy, you know, traveling from Syria with explosives under his coat, uh, going somewhere in Europe, and boom, I am the returnee. Uh, no, uh, 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 nonsense. Uh. Uh, uh, so I think let them back, you know, uh, go to jail, a trial, you know, a trial, they have to explain what they did. Uh, uh, and we have the same problems here than with, um, uh, for instance, in Italy with uh, Red Brigades, you know, or in France with Action Direct. You know. uh, 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 so we have an experience of this kind of guy. Th these guys cannot come back and say, sorry, I made a lot of mis mistakes, I beg your pardon, and so on. So it's why we want them to do. They don't do that. No. They say, okay, we made mistakes. Mm. It was a big mistake to kill the people in Bataclan. But the cause of the Islamic State is still valid. Uh, 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 our leaders were bad, uh, but still I believe in the cause. <laughs> no, so in this case, the guys, he, he goes to jail for 20 years. You know. uh, um, uh, but uh, you cannot ask a guy who um, uh, saw all his uh, comrades being killed you know, to say, oh, I'm sorry, um, uh, we made a mistake, so now I want to go back home and I want uh, to find my job uh, again, you know, at the factory, and let's forget everything. No, of course, no. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, a court trial is made for that. And for the uh, women and, and children, we have to take them, not only, uh, you know, uh, to accept them, but to go and pick them. And, and uh, The children are French, Germans, British, and so. Uh, the children didn't choose to be born. Um, uh, they are legally uh, uh, citizens uh, uh, not all. Uh, uh, there are some uh, people who have no citizenship, uh, no European citizenship. But uh, the majority of them, at least for France, they have by birth mm, uh, 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 the French citizenship. Okay, uh, let's take them back. And when I hear people, you know, oh, you know, this guy is seven years, but he has been brainwashed, and uh, when he will be 15, uh, uh, he might become a terrorist. What's that, you know? Uh, uh, it's this kind of uh, film of science fiction uh, um, uh, 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 that you can uh, uh, put a program in the brain of people and then you start a button and uh, so. Nonsense, you know. It, it shows a total lack of confidence in our own societies. Total lack of confidence, you know. I understand that, you know, uh, some of the mothers, uh, and it's the rule in France, when they come back with the children, uh, the social services take the children. Uh, for the converts, and there is a slight discrimination here, the children are, uh, are given back to the uh, uh, mother of the convert. Uh, for the Muslims, <coughs> uh, not so often. Uh, but... Um, it's normal, you know. They are checked. They are uh, uh, so you have medical examination. The mother is interrogated by the police. Uh, they they, they cross-check uh, her declaration. It's normal, you know. At the end, in some t cases, one year after, okay, she's freed and she uh, takes back the uh, children. In some other cases, she is sentenced to jail because she she was part of the system. Yeah. Mm. And the children are dealt like any uh, child of a detainee. Yeah. There, there are rules, there are services, there are a lot of things, you know. So I don't understand this uh, psychodrama. And uh, uh, the last one, France. Uh, I think uh, France is targeted not because of French politics, mm. uh, uh, because these guys don't care about the real politics of the uh, European uh, 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 country. You know, um, uh, they didn't attack in uh, in Barcelona because they have a problem with the Catalans. You, know, uh, you don't have a Catalan foreign policy, uh, uh, not yet. Uh, uh, they attack in Barcelona because they were living in Barcelona. That's all. You know, uh, uh, it's always proximity terrorism. These guys don't have all. You know, um, uh, uh, the them and so the guy uh, uh, explored themselves in Brussels because they were living in Brussels. Uh, same in Treb, you know, this small village in the south of France. Uh, I never heard about this place. Uh, uh, and the guy uh, 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 attacked the supermarket, local supermarket because he was living 200 meters from the supermarket. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, so we have a bigger reservoir in France. Uh, for two reasons. First, uh, that the bulk of the North Africans are uh, in France. Mm. And second, because in France, the deculturation of religion is at the highest level in Europe. Mm. You cannot speak of religion in France. 
Okay. So, uh, uh, which means that religion is given to the radicals. Now, in Italy, for instance, and why I say that in France, you know, ah, well, so, in Italy, in jail, hmm, you have a priest, a uh, chaplain, Catholic, of course, of course, you know. Uh, and the priest, he goes from door to door. He knocks on the door of the cells. He, he uh, so, uh, say, oh, my son, uh, do you have a problem? Do you want to speak, to discuss? Even if he has a Muslim in front of him, he doesn't say, uh, sorry, uh, are you baptized? Uh, uh, so. In France, a chaplain has no right to meet a, a prisoner. The prisoner has to file a form uh, saying that I am a Catholic, I want to see a Catholic priest. I am a Muslim, I want to see an imam. And if you uh, say, and we have uh, concrete cases, well, I am nothing. I just want to speak with uh, uh, the priest, the rabbi, and the imam. Uh, then the administration said, no, 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 you can speak to the three. You have to make a choice. Uh, 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 it's not a place to discuss religion here. Okay. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, we have a radicalization of uh, religion uh, because we have a radicalization of secularism. Mm -hmm. It's not mechanical. It doesn't work you know, in a uh, causative way, but there is. Uh, 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 coalition, of course. Thank you so much, uh, Olivier. So please uh, introduce yourselves uh, with name and affiliation, and please also wait uh, to speak before you, uh, until you get the microphone, just because of the streaming issue. So the first uh, person I have on my list is the gentleman in the middle, uh, on my right. My name is Sidusen. I'm uh, doing PhD uh, in international relations, and my area of research is religious extremism. Uh, thank you very much for useful information and knowledge uh, based on your research. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, your speech uh, that uh, you mentioned that jail is the most significant jail jail prison is most significant place for radicalization. So, what are the reasons behind that? And secondly. Uh, from uh, uh, Europe, if we compare with the Al-Qaeda and the IS, uh, the so-called Islamic State uh, in Syria and Iraq, uh, what was the reason behind that uh, many of the people, uh, thousands of people, they traveled to Syria, but they didn't travel on the call of Al-Qaeda to Afghanistan before that. So it, was it a takfiri narrative or what the uh, political objectives of uh, Islamic State? Thank you. Uh, and we will take uh, three questions, uh, because I'm sure there will be many questions. So there is also a gentleman on the second line, also to my right. Yes. I think uh, my name is uh, Stig J. Hansen, professor at NMBU. Um, I'm a little bit interested. It was very refreshing when you talked about the socioeconomic variables and the trap of uh, having these large variables influencing you. Uh, because the prediction power is so low. But I wonder, when you bring up youth culture, isn't that a little bit similar? There's a lot of people that are influenced by it. And I have two fast other questions. You know, the first one is concerning what Stephen Wayne called Generation 1.5, basically immigrants that comes quite late, but not when they are adult, between eight and 18, you know, do, they, do you see they have a role in your uh, work? And the last one is about uh, Bibi van Ginkel and Edwin Bakker in, in Holland, when they say psychological problems might be an issue for the Dutch foreign fighters. I wonder if you have any comments on that. Uh, for jail, um, it's almost obvious, you know, uh, first we have an over-representation over of young Muslims in jail. Uh, uh, secondly, a jail is a very violent place. Uh, if you are alone, uh, 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 you are lost. Mm. So uh, you try to find brothers. And the, um, uh, the genius of the, you, you always have an activist uh, in jail. Uh, sometimes it's a guy who became himself a born again in jail, you know. And uh, if he's a bit charismatic, for instance, then he organized, you know, a, a brotherhood uh, uh, of Muslims. And so uh, some people convert to join the Brotherhood, uh, and uh, it provides security, mm. uh, not only against the other inmates, but against the administration also. Yeah. If you know the American uh, series Oz, uh, uh, it was uh, 30 years ago, 
the life uh, in an American jail. And it was very good, you know, uh, of course a bit excessive, but very good, you know. Uh, uh, and you have the Muslims, uh, 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 you have the blacks, you had, you know, this, uh, the Muslims, the blacks, the Latino, uh, uh, a, a whole subculture organizing itself, a conta society, not subculture, a conta society inside the jail. Uh, uh, and the, uh, yeah, the, to, to belong to a tight-knit group of born again, uh, first psychologically it helps, but also not just psychologically, uh, physically also. Uh, Al-Qaeda. Uh, Al-Qaeda <coughs> uh, brought people from uh, abroad, uh, uh, and is still bringing people from abroad to their uh, camps for training. Mm. But Al-Qaeda never uh, wanted you know, the foreigners to be involved in local life. Never. Mm. And Al-Qaeda never wanted to create an Islamic state. Uh, uh, Al-Qaeda was very happy to have the Taliban Islamic State. Mm. And Al-Qaeda helped the Taliban uh, uh, by killing Massoud, for instance, uh, um, uh, through a French-Tunisian, fr no, Belgian, uh, 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 Belgian-Tunisian guy, mm. uh, uh, so using uh, homegrown terrorists. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the Taliban, of course, didn't allow Al-Qaeda to interfere you know, in uh, daily politics. So it's a totally different thing. Huh? For Al-Qaeda, uh, uh, there is a need for sanctuary to train people. Not you know, this kind of uh, 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 big playground that you have uh, in Syria. Huh? The guys, they can play, you know, uh, the, the heroes. Uh, they are the vanguard of the Islamic State and so on. So, so Im the imaginary is far more uh, effective uh, uh, and better stage with ISIS and with, uh, with Al Qaeda. It's why they stopped to go to Al Qaeda. They joined ISIS. Uh, um, uh, it was um, a, a process, um, um, uh, in a very short time. Uh, of course, the youth culture is um, a real subculture in the neighborhoods. What we call the neighborhoods. So there is a correlation with the socio-economic situation. Uh, the youth culture is more than. Um, um, uh, uh, underclass culture. It's more than that because uh, the uh, many patterns, you know, aesthetic patterns of the youth culture are shared uh, uh, in other classes in terms of music, for instance, uh, 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 things like that. But uh, yes, uh, the youth culture is thriving, you know, in destitute neighborhoods uh, uh, because there is nothing. Uh, 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 it's uh, the basis of uh, youth socialization. Um, uh, so we, we don't, uh, the, the gang system, so it's, it, it doesn't reach the level of Chicago, for instance, but uh, we have a growing gang culture. Um, and uh, between uh, secular gang culture and the uh, Islamic ideology of a cell, mm. of a uh, ISIS cell, the difference is not so big. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have the impression when they uh, leave the gang to go to Al-Qaeda of a promotion. Uh, uh, you, you do real things instead of playing, you know, um, uh, 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 to know who is uh, controlling the street, this street, and not that street. Uh, generation 1.5, I put uh, them in the, uh, what I call the second generation. Because for me, it's not the place where you are born, it's uh, the place where you are socialized. Uh, and um, Kelkal came uh, to Paris when he was uh, two, three years old. Mm. Uh, of course, you said between 8 and 18. Uh, 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 for me, the real difference is precisely somewhere between 8 and 18. Uh, 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 if you uh, come after 15, uh, you are first generation. Uh, uh, because you cannot join uh, the educational system uh, after 15. But if you come when you are 8, you join the educational system. Mm. Or at least, you know, what is left of the uh, educational uh, system. Uh, um, uh, uh, psychology, yeah, it's a big debate. Um, um, you know, it's clear that some of them have psych psychological problems. Uh, but I would say no more than uh, other categories of population. Uh, you have a huge level of uh, 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 paranoia, for instance, um, um, in some very well-to-do cycles. Uh, 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 if you look at the um, pathology of um, uh, the academic world, for instance, you have uh, everything, you know. Uh, uh, so it's the same with the um, uh, terrorist groups, you know, you have everybody. Mm. Uh, 
uh, if you have a paranoid, well, yeah, uh, ISIS can provide you with a way to externalize and to transcend your paranoia. Mm. Uh, but I don't think it's a cause. It's clear that we have a lot of uh, 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 limit, you know, uh, uh, guys, you know, the, in Nice, for instance, the guy of Nice, uh, the guy of Orlando. Uh, uh, okay, the, we, th there is a pathological dimension. Uh, but um, uh, for me, what is important is that they uh, frame the pathology in the narrative of ISIS. So at the end, it doesn't make a difference. No. Then we have uh, Julia Williamson. Julia Williamson with this institute. Thank you very much for your very <coughs> stimulating talk. I would like you to zoom in on your explanation a bit uh, more because you effectively kind of debunk <laughs> certain variables. And I'm wondering, <coughs> what are we left with? So I agree we're left with the narrative and the appeal of the narrative. But then I kind of uh, noticed your reference to the, the fight club or the kind of martial arts. And for those of us, some of us here are working on the Northern Caucasus, where this is a very you know, clear variable, the fact that they have a practice for violence in a way. Um, so I would want you to just elaborate a bit on, on that. What is kind of the, in, the, in your explanation, what is the relation or the importance of the narrative uh, and the kind of social practices, bodily uh, practices. And then I had a second question, <clears throat> just really interested in your thesis on the deculturalization of religion and uh, where does it leave kind of the secular project? And I'm thinking of the difference between France and Norway, because in, in France you've been going for a long time, you know, implementing the secular project, whereas that's really picking up speed now, as I can see in Norway, at least that's how I judge it from my children's um, experiences in schools these days, that the, the fairly hefty secular push not to speak about God or whatever in, in school is, what, what will be the result of that? We will take uh, one more question before um, you answer. Uh, Laila Bukhari. Um, Hi, uh, Laila Vukrady. Uh, thank you very much for, I would agree, a very interesting, stimulating talk. Uh, there's so much to pick up on here, and I'm going to try and be brief. Firstly, your issue on um, physical space of um, radicalization or recruitment. You stressed, um, you stressed three areas, the jail, sports clubs, and mosque. Now, um, what about virtual space? And I know this has been this has been um, a continuous debate within terrorist um, um, research environments. You know, wh what role does the internet play as well? Uh, could you say a little bit about that? How you see that standing today? And then, uh, secondly, if I may, um, um, if we see Syria, um, um, the end of Syria, <laughs> if you like, um, where is the new playground or the new sanctuary? Um, and how or what advice would you give to policymakers and others who are, you know, trying to follow up on this? Um, not that many people returning, dead maybe, but where would the next space be, if any? Thank you very much. So, um, the, the relationship with uh, bodily practices, it's to, um, uh, 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 I would say, to, to make you a hero, you know, uh, somebody who is strong, beautiful, and so on and so on. Um, they play, uh, ISIS played a lot in the video games about, you know, uh, uh, the, um, the figure, you know, of the hero mm -hmm. uh, with the Kalashnikov, but the guy is beautiful. Ah. Uh, 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 there is a, the case of a convert, you know, and um, uh, when the journalist went to his home in Normandy, people say, oh, the little guy, you know, he was so shy, he was, uh, we are always joking about him and so, and now in uh, Daesh, you know, he's uh, 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 like a viking, you know, with a, with a uh, uh, red bird, uh, um, uh, uh, strong, and uh, maybe he went to a bodybuilding uh, practice before, but um, uh, at least it works. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> The secular project, that's a big problem, you know. Uh, for me, but it's uh, um, for another lecture, uh, the issue of Islam now is hitting 
an other issue. What is the place of religion in Europe? No. Because we concentrate on Islam all the problems we have with the concept of religion. No. For a very good reason. We are a secularized society. No. The problem is not separation of church and state. The problem is religious practices and religious um, um, uh, literacy. Religious literacy is zero. No. Uh, uh, if you ask somebody, you know, in France, uh, uh, what is your Holy Spirit? What is the Trinity? They don't know. No. They don't care. So before people were anti-religious because they knew religion. Now they are far more tolerant because they don't know anything about religion and they don't care to know. So the problem is, what do we oppose to Islam? Uh, people say, uh, Europe is Christian. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, ask the Pope. You know, uh, 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 and the Pope says, well, Europe is a secular a culture of death, abortion, same-sex marriage. Uh, uh, you have to uh, go back to the faith. Uh, okay. No, for the, the Catholic Church knows that Europe is no more secular. It's no more Christian. Uh, uh, so do we oppose to Islam uh, the modern uh, secular values? Hmm? Feminism, gay rights, and so? Yes, but what about the Catholic Church? Yeah. Is the Catholic Church European? Yeah. Uh, uh, we say, oh, the Muslims, you know, they are uh, religious fanatics. They don't accept uh, 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 feminism. Yeah, uh, until now, we have no female bishop in the Catholic Church. No? Uh, so we want to impose um, a female imam to the Muslims, saying, the day you will have female imams, we will consider you as, as European. Uh, but uh, we just forget that, you know, uh, there is a town uh, in mid-Italy uh, uh, which is not uh, in the Middle East. Yeah? Um, uh, Vatican City is in Europe. Uh, sorry. No. Um, uh, uh, so we, uh, a part, I think, of the moral crisis is that we, we don't know what are the European values. It's why we speak about identity. What is it, identity, you know? Identity. Yeah. Culture, I understand what culture means, you know, but identity. Uh, identity is I am I. Okay, uh, uh, good luck. Uh, 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 and uh, my colleague is uh, me too. Okay, uh, uh, so what do you do after? Uh, 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 so we have here a problem of uh, uh, definition of norms and values in Europe. Uh, and for the religion, either the religion opposes like the Catholic Church uh, now, or the religion have self-secularized themselves, like the Lutheran uh, Church. No? Lutheran uh, Church, has, uh, it's a good example of auto-secularization, self-secularization. Oh, uh, okay, so in this case, we have no problem with uh, Lutheranism. Hmm? It's no more a religion. I'm joking. Uh, 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 it's really what I say when I am in Rome, you know, uh, and here I speak about the Catholic Church. Um, uh, uh, virtual space, yes, of course, uh, yeah, that's very important. The problem is it's difficult to make a sociological approach of this, uh, virtual space. Um, do we have people who convert exclusively uh, on the internet? We're not sure, you know. Uh, 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 many, yes, but. Uh, there is always a link, a, a, a concrete link. Uh, La Rossi, for example, the guy who killed the two uh, police uh, people in Normandy. Uh, the first start, uh, the first look, it, it seemed that uh, everything was on the internet. You know that he met uh, his accomplice on the internet, that they uh, uh, gave themselves an appointment on the internet, and so. And then one year after, uh, it happened that uh, no, he was in connection with other guys who are in Syria and so and so. Um, so the, it's always a problem uh, when people meet, uh, uh, when people are uh, with internet, what do they do when they don't look internet? You know, they, uh, maybe they have no social life. Maybe they have a life. So um, it, it's a bit uh, uh, of a problem. And the new sanctuary, as I said, you know, uh, uh, some of them will go to maybe to Mali, to, uh, to Yemen, uh, probably more to Afghanistan. Uh, but I don't think that they will uh, be uh, substitute to uh, ISIS with the same, you know, capacity of uh, uh, absorbing uh, thousands of volunteers. Thanks a lot. Now we have uh, a gentleman in the back, on the, uh, in the middle. Uh, yes. Okay. My name is uh, Esther Nemblan. I'm coming from Secular Forum. And I have uh, one, in one question. And it's uh, regarding uh, your comparison between uh, terrorists in Europe or in the West and those going to Iraq and Syria. And you said that their uh, motive is uh, linked to their 
suicidal urge or or uh, and uh, a global um, hijab, uh, a, a sort of a global revolution the same as, uh, as, uh, as as maybe some communists in the old days but uh, it isn't the motivation for the two different groups uh, quite different i mean those wanting to uh, to strike the core enemy the west here in the west and those going uh, to syria and iraq to create um, ideal uh, Muslim states and fighting other Muslims to achieve that. Uh, and they are not doing any suicidal attacks, not mainly, they are just fighting. Isn't that right? So how can you, how can you bundle these two groups in the same? Thank you. Uh, so um, we have uh, two more questions. Uh, and um, uh, Olivia, unfortunately, you have to leave at 12 uh, because of another meeting. But uh, first, it's uh, Lars Gula. Thank you. Lars Gule, Oslo Metropolitan University. And it's a rather a brief comment on uh, <coughs> the role of jail, because uh, you mentioned that 63% of uh, the Norwegians uh, having traveled to Syria uh, had uh, been involved in petty uh, delinquency. That is probably right, but uh, Norway is not big enough for them to have met other extremists in jail. So uh, jail has not been an arena for so-called radicalization in the Norwegian case. But the impressions on the internet from what's going on in Syria affected 73% of them, according to the security police evaluation. Thank you. And the last question is to Panille. Uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. Uh, it's interesting that you say that the second generation is overrepresented. But then, uh, if I'm not uh, wrong, also uh, the uh, people, the second generation f with origins from Morocco, have also been overrepresented, at least uh, in the attack in France. And I wonder if you could uh, have any explanation for that. Uh, the second question is that you, you mentioned that jail is, is the main arena for radicalization. Uh, but at the same time, then we would be interested in why these people come to jail in the first place. And then one could think that these socioeconomic arguments are the kind of the, the, the reasons, the factors are, are relevant, why they become criminals and in, in turn they become radicalized in prison. So I wonder how you see, is, does it have to be an either or, or maybe it's a both and? Um, and maybe you can link that up also to the, um, the, 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 uh, the kind of the, how this is linked up to the laicity and the secularization, because uh, if they, they are criminal, criminal <laughs> criminals in the first place and then get radicalized, it shouldn't have so much to do with the, with the secularism. Uh, thank you. Thank you, yes, uh, to, to start with, uh, with jail. Um, uh, uh, you can have a past uh, of uh, petty delinquency and not be radicalized in jail. You know, um, uh, uh, the important thing is that uh, 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 the majority of them have a past in petty delinquency. Uh, uh, and uh, radicalization is a sub-consequence, if I can uh, say that, uh, especially, of course, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in France. Um, uh, so, and in jail, you have a psychological pressure, uh, as I said, which is uh, 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 stronger than in normal life. Uh, 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 and you have an individualization, you're alone. Uh, so you, um, uh, you, you reconstruct a social link uh, uh, through uh, the feeling of brotherhood. And it's exactly the way they reconstruct religion uh, from scratch, because they have no uh, 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 real uh, uh, religious knowledge, formation, transmission, and so. Um, the problem of Morocco, as I said, it's also a cultural and linguistic problem. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting because you have no jihadi inside Morocco, mm -hmm. but a lot of Moroccan jihadi outside. Uh, 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 so it's they export their jihadi. <laughs> uh, 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 because inside, so it's a society. Uh, you have a social link, a national Islam. You have a, uh, It's a quite a cohesive, less and less for different reasons, but quite co still a cohesive society. Uh, uh, and once you are out, I would say, of the family bounds, for instance, uh, the disappearance of the paternal figure uh, outside, uh, 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 all that uh, play uh, play play uh, a role. Uh, jihadi and terrorists. 
sure, a, uh, it's better to make a difference between a jihadi, somebody who goes for jihad only, uh, and terrorist. The problem is that uh, 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 it's, um, uh, there is a very uh, large uh, overlap. Most of the jihadis go to commit suicide attacks, or at least they are recruited by the ISIS to do suicide attacks. You know that they, uh, they maybe they didn't come, uh, they, they didn't go for suicide attacks, but uh, uh, once there, uh, uh, ISIS told them, "Okay, do you volunteer for tomorrow?" And the guy say, "Oh yes, uh, no." Uh, and then we read, for instance, what the women, uh, the we, women uh, say. They say that their husband will die before leaving. Uh, so they know uh, that they are going to die. Uh, uh, so it's why I mixed both. Uh, but I, uh, I agree that some of them uh, went not to die, but to uh, participate in the creation of a just Islamic society. The problem is that they are never involved uh, in uh, creating a just Islamic society. They are never employed in civil uh, things. You know, there is a very, uh, a very good article in New York Times. Uh, uh, they have explo exploited the uh, uh, the files of the ISIS bureaucracy you know, that they found. You know how ISIS was managing society, and it's clear it, it was a war economy. Mm. ISIS was rationalizing, you know, the exploitation of the society mm, uh, in order to extract the surplus you know, to finance the fight. It was not the Saudis who paid for the uh, jihad, uh, contrary to what many people. It's not the Gulf. They uh, found the money. Uh, uh, on the spot, yeah. uh, and they uh, never tried really uh, to establish a sustainable society. Never. <laughs> no. uh, so it's why, but in another story, I think that the suicidal dimension in the individuals who join uh, jihad from abroad, from the West, match with the apocalyptic dimension of ISIS policy. We know that uh, 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 the enemy will win, but in fact, they, we will destroy the, uh, the enemy uh, uh, with us. You know. Uh, and apocalypse is at the core huh, uh, of the explanation of the world uh, by uh, uh, ISIS. Uh, Dabik, uh, uh, they call their uh, news journal Dabik, which is a place where, according to uh, the prophet, uh, the last battle of the uh, apocalypse uh, should be uh, uh, waged. So we have to conclude here. Um, I would like to thank uh, thank you, Olivia, so much for coming here and honoring Nupi. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, sorry for the small uh, beeping uh, of the door. It was due to a uh, an, um, an alarm in the entire building, so it was not only here. And uh, I would also like to tell you that on Friday, we have another seminar on, uh, on radicalization with Richard Taylor as a psychi uh, psychiatrist. So maybe see some of you there. Thank you so much. <laughs>